Hi friends, my name is Borradante. Let's paint potatoes with eyes. The idea came to me one day when I noticed that potatoes that I bought had these little growings on it, their surface. And I asked a friend and she said that these things are called eyes on a potato, like when it starts growing into the bush thing. I'm not sure how popular this word in English or in other countries, but it's actually, I looked it up, it's also translated in English as potatoes eyes. Now I just have to paint potatoes with actual eyes on them. So let's do that. Okay, so the composition will be based on, um, there will be like a bowl or a kind of like a wooden bucket with a bunch of potatoes in it. They all have eyes, but they're like out of focus. In the main portion of the image, there will be human hands holding a potato, like one of the potatoes, and there are like eyes and they're staring at different directions. It's gonna be weird and awesome. So let's start. Okay, this time let's start with a whole bunch of just color spots to figure out where we want to see values and all that. It's kind of simple thing, the only complex part will be the hand, and also the complex part is to make the composition right, to make the image look great in the thumbnail size, which is really important, especially on the internet. If you're an artist who creates images for the internet, it's really important that the image would be interesting in a very small size. And it's not just a practical importance for the internet users, it's also one of the signs that the image is good, because image is supposed to be awesome on all distances. I always have this problem, my images look good only in very much of a close-up, like I do good details, but in general the image looks kind of weird, like you don't know where to actually look at. And the colors are weird, like I'm kind of autistic, I figure out the details, but the whole image in general doesn't really pop properly. Well, it kind of gets better recently because I practice a lot, but still we have to pay more attention to this kind of stuff. So let's do this today, since the whole image is not that complex. So the base will be kind of dark. The lighting is sort of a kind of cool daylight without the sunlight from the window that's somewhere nearby. So it's kind of soft, yet with very contrast ambient deep shadows of everything that, that's going further away from the window. That kind of stuff. It actually looks pretty cool if I'll be able to make it work. Probably not. So there will be like a bucket in here, like very closed up, or it's probably just big. So like that, and the color is kind of wooden, and it's a little bit of a cold light, so it will be closer to red and pale. Not that much of a red though. Pale and darker, because wood is initially kind of a warm color, and the lighting is cool, so all the warmness of the wood will become dark because life is pain. <laughs> so yeah, let's try this brush. Um, Ultimate Ring. It's really cool. I think it doesn't really show up properly in the recording, but it's a giant, very thin circle that can be distorted in three dimensions, like become more oval or more round, and at any direction, like from the way I tilt the pen. So, it's kind of a cheating thing to be able to paint perfect ovals. I'm not sure if it helps here much, but kind of a guideline. Like, there's a classical way of just using some kind of shapes or something, but it's so much slower than just use the brush real quick. This brush is actually available in the brush pack in the description, so check it out if you want. Okay, I don't know what these bright spots inside of the bucket are, but for some reason I spent five minutes figuring them out. Let's add potatoes onto them, like just the basic placement to understand where we want to see them. Potatoes are kind of yellow, especially in the cold light. I mean, of course, basic potatoes, not sweet potatoes. We don't really have sweet potatoes in Ukraine, so I don't even know what they're like. They say they're just like this typical potatoes, but sweet. So 
So there's a bit of a translucency going on in potatoes, so I'm using a bit more of a vibrant and warm color to make undertones. The ones I'm doing right now, I mean. Not caring for any details whatsoever at the moment, because we're still gonna paint the hand with the big potato in front. And we'll probably cover up most of the stuff. I should actually start with the hand in situations like this. I always start with the background without even figuring out at all where everything else is gonna be. Salt and pepper situation. Okay, good enough for now, let's add the hand. Okay, basic thing is done. There will be a bunch of fixes on the fingers and the hand in general. But for now, let's add eyeballs. Okay, let's see. I'm not sure how big they should be. Kinda like this. A bit bigger than the actual potato eyes. And one should be like giant, and other one should be really tiny. I'm placing perfect circles right now, because eyeballs themselves are perfect circles. It's just that we will have to erase portion of them, of some of them, because they're hidden inside of the potato. Okay, let's shade these with a soft brush. Okay, so these are the eyeballs. Now let's merge them together with the potato and the hand and add iris and all that. And then the background eyes as well. Not sure about the colorfulness of these eyeballs, like the iris. They look like candy. But maybe it's because I haven't shaded them yet. In any case, if it looks weird, we can just desaturate it a bit. I have it in a separate layer. I think colors are cool. They work way better when they're shaded, so it looks really nice right now. Adding some eyeballs on the background before merging everything together. 
and then we'll be working on some really cool details. I'm thinking we need to add some kind of defects on the surface of a potato right next to the eyeballs. Not exactly eyelids, but something like that. And also just tiny dots and defects on the surface of potato like, uh, like a normal potato has. Maybe some soil, dirt kind of thing too. And a lot more detailed highlights. <laughs> this is looking so cool right now. It's really important to make the background eyeballs not too high on contrast. So they wouldn't just dissolve the main potato in the whole composition. making everything darker in the background. I'm really afraid that the main potato will dissolve in the everything else and it kind of looks like that. Well, not anymore. Kind of fine right now. If anything, I'll add just a couple of brighter specks if it looks too dim or something. So this seems pretty great right now. Let's merge everything together and continue with the slice of life and other brushes. Adding nice details. Didn't like the long stripes around the eyeballs. It kind of doesn't look like potato anymore, it's not cool. I can't stress enough how this slice of life brush works awesomely. I mean, you need the tilt supportive tablet for it, but if you do, it's so great. Like, I can create a very tiny stroke, a sharp one, at any angle I want. Really great. The greatest part is that it's so easy to place any detail right on the edge. For instance, right here, I can just paint tiny things like this. And it looks like some kind of pieces of dirt or just little bumps, lumps on the surface of the potato. And they are already in the geometry, in the correct geometry on the edge. Because the stroke is right away very flat and at any angle I need. So you don't need to constantly switch to the tiny brush or like make a stroke and then erase part of it. It just goes there right away. Really cool. Done! Uh, my hand is kinda tired from all these details. Well, this is quite cute. An hour of details before, an hour of details later. Cool. Definitely in love with this brush. Although it kind of requires... That's why my wrist is kind of tired, because you have to change the angles all the time. I would love to see this animated, like in a 3D animation. Maybe combined with live action. Like to actually see how these eyeballs rotate, look at you and all that. Maybe even the potatoes are kind of shaking a bit from the fear. Well, this is kind of funny and creepy a bit, just the way I like it. I love how studies help me figure out details of hands and all that. Like it's far from the perfect hand, of course. Like some parts of the hand are kind of weird, but I accept that. But in general, like, I feel I know how to add details of the skin in the, in the extreme close-up, you know? It's really important to figure this out for this kind of images. Well, anyway, this was Potatoes with Eyes. 
And I thank you for watching if you did, I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, go easy on those carbs, do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!